Tonight, Efren Reyes, the current eight ball champion, looks to repeat as he defends his title against a young Turk from Bloomington, Minnesota, Jimmy Wett, a surprise finalist looking for the first major title of his professional career. Billiard Tour. We greet you from the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. And tonight, the Camel Pro Billiard Series opens up our television year by bringing you the finals of the World 8 Ball Championship. And what a tournament it has been, and what a championship final we've got, and what a year for the Camel Series. You know, there'll be 14 major tournaments televised. You'll see them all right here on Prime. And for the professionals, a million and a half dollars in prize money, and then at the end of the tournament year, another 250000 that'll be divided up among the best of the best, according to the point system. I'm Tom Kelly, your host. We welcome you to our telecast. We've got Efren Reyes, the defending champion, World 8 Ball, and he's in against a young guy from Bloomington, Minnesota, Jimmy Wedge, who is a surprise finalist, frankly, but he played brilliantly in the semifinals, ousting Johnny Archer. I've got two of the best players the game has ever seen scene with me. They'll provide the color commentary and the expertise. This, of course, is the rifleman Buddy Hall. The handsome youngster over here is the colonel from Kentucky. This is Nick Barner, a Hall of Favor. And let's find out your thoughts about this. First of all, Buddy, a million and a half dollars gets the juices going, and uh, the activity is great. The competition heavy on the tour. It makes you want to get on the table and practice. Indeed it does, and I, we can look for you. You're playing well this year. You're off to a pretty good start. I've been playing real well. Indeed. The fellow over to my right, a Hall of Famer, has been playing great. He wins the tournament up at Reno, finished fourth San Diego. You're playing good, Nick. Yeah, I'm off to a good start this year. Uh, I really enjoy playing on the tour this year. You might have been in the semifinals. You and Reyes had a great match, but you kind of snickered yourself in that one and lost out, didn't you? Yeah, he got me. Uh, he got off to a good start, and he played a really great match, and I kind of snuckered myself behind the <laughs> eight like you saw it. You saw it. <laughs> I was down there. there. <laughs> it was indeed. Now then, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, Reyes is awfully tough to beat. Well, he's proved he's a uh, world eight ball champion. He's uh, defending his title, and uh, I'm sure he'd like to make it two in a row. And uh, then you got Jimmy Wetch, uh, who uh, faced him in a tournament earlier in the That's year, right. and uh, he's going to be trying to break through and uh, prove that he can really play. Wetch was down in Commerce, uh, the Commerce Casino, and he actually had Reyes down 5-1, buddy. And Reyes was sitting on the stool. The minute he got a chance to play, he ran it off and beat him 11-5. Wetch has got a little something to prove, I guess. Uh, Wetch has got a lot to prove. He's wanting to show people that he might be the best uh, eight-ball player in the world, too. He might indeed. We thank you for joining us. It'll be a great match. You stay tuned now we'll be back for the lag to see who gets the first break in the world eight ball championship don't go away from the riviera hotel in las vegas nevada the pro billiards tour presents the camel pro billiards series brought to you by AMF Playmaster, bringing quality to the table. American Professional Billiards. And by Meiuchi, used by more pros than any other custom cue. These are the two semifinalists. First of all, this is Jimmy Wetch, and Jimmy was escorted in by two lovely ladies, and here's Efren Reyes. He, too, has two beautiful women, one on each arm. They're members, of course, of the Crazy Lady Review here at the uh, Riviera Hotel and Casino, and a great crowd on hand to watch this championship match, and we now take you to the two gentlemen at the table. The ladies have uh, disappeared and gone to to work and now these two guys are going to go to work they lag to see who gets the first break that's reyes on the left and jimmy wetch on the right and the man who puts the ball closest to the rail in front of him will get to break first and it's an all-important advantage and it's going to go to reyes as uh, wetch uh, didn't get the ball back to the rail and we'll check the rules that govern eight ball competition this is the only eight ball tournament that the pros play uh, as you can see the rules why um, you can uh, shoot any ball the full rack but it uh, depends on what falls out of the break eight ball cannot be struck first at any time if you scratch on the break it's a ball in hand and of course uh, it's a race to eight and you have to call the eight ball 
uh, to uh, make it and win the rack. Now then, um, all balls stay down. Only the eight ball must be called. And uh, three consecutive fouls by a player, and that loses the rack. And uh, obviously the game. So here's Reyes now. Reyes was absolutely brilliant and uh, effortless, it seems, in the semifinal match against Steve Miserak. When he defeated Miserak, it looks like the seven ball is going to go. It rattled right in the cage and wouldn't fall. He defeated Miserak 8 nothing. Unbelievable. Miserak got off the stool twice, made two balls, did not make another on either occasion. And Reyes ran every table and won 8 nothing. Uh, here's Wetch getting to uh, start first. And uh, what's he looking at, gentlemen? He's looking to see what choice he's going to make, uh, whether he wants to go with the low number balls or the high number balls. And uh, he's checking to see uh, which ones are the easiest to run. The and, table uh, seems to be pretty well spread out for him. The eight balls is right in the middle. Yeah, it looks like uh, the balls he's worried about seems to be right there above the spot, uh, uh, that stripe. But uh, looks like he's electing to maybe take uh, either the ball hung up or the ball on the side. All right, he wants the solids. They're, they're laying out. Jimmy's from Bloomington, Minnesota, has his own pool parlor back there. The Crown Plaza is the name of it. Well, I'll say one thing, Jimmy's got to be pretty happy because in the last match when uh, Ephraim was playing uh, Steve, he just uh, broke, ran out, broke, ran out. And uh, for Jimmy to get started here with the first shot, uh, he's got to feel pretty good after making that first ball. I would think it's a confidence booster. And let's face it, Ephraim Reyes, called the magician, is considered, uh, perhaps we've told you many times, uh, the best pool player in the world. And if you can get one up on Reyes at any time, it has to give you a feeling of confidence because the man is truly an outstanding player. But hey, we've had 61 of the best players in the world competing all week long. They have been tremendous matches. No match except the semifinal was 8 nothing. Nick or Buddy, they were all 8-7, eight, 8-6. Eight, they were tight. Right, they were real tight. This, uh, uh, this match right here is not only uh, uh, a match between these two guys that when they played over to Commerce Casino, but they've also played in this tournament, and Jimmy Hammett happened to come out the winner. Yes, in he that beat Reyes. Yeah. Match. It put Reyes in the one loser bracket, didn't it? Right, and now he's uh, Reyes has fought his way all the way back, and uh, here they are again. He said, Well, let's see if you can do it again, big yeah, boy. That's right. Sometime, buddy, it's, uh, and uh, Tom, it's uh, hard to beat at this same guy twice. Really, really. Especially if that guy's Efren Reyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The old saying, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, or something mm -hmm. like that. Just paraphrase it to play, beat me once, shame on you, beat me twice, shame on me. Uh, I tell you what, he seems to be moving around the table with a lot of confidence. Yes. So. Nice. Uh, he's a slow and deliberate type player, and he doesn't do anything in a big hurry, and he looks everything over carefully. And, of course, why not? Six ball in the corner. This is a very important match for him, obviously, in addition to um, the points. We told you there's a $250,000 pot. The best of the best are going to cut up at the end of the year. And, of course, it's all based on the points scored during the Pro Billiard Tour year. And, of course, you win one of these, you get 200 points. Yeah, I think everybody's been practicing a lot more this year with... Uh uh, this Camel Pro Billiard Series and uh, the big pot, that quarter of a million dollar pot at the end of the year. Uh, uh, everybody seems to be really in a good humor on the tour. Uh, everybody seems happy and uh, seems like uh, people are playing a lot better this year. Yeah, very competitive. Is that uh, eight ball, That is that the 15 ball that's got next to the eight ball there? What is yes, it? it is. You know what you were talking about, this, uh, all this money out here on the tour's got everybody practicing. That's why you're seeing such great play. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah, but he's one of them because uh, he oh. started off oh. this year with a bang. That's bang. loss of game. That was loss of game. Oh. Reyes sits there and wins game number one and uh, didn't do anything but break the, 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 the rack, didn't he? Huh? Fourteen, last and ball he rolling. Makes it. The fourteen, indeed, it was Buddy Hall. The last ball rolling. 
There's a certain element of luck involved in the break, oh, yes. but after that, he kind of, they don't call him the magician just because they feel like tagging him with a nickname. He does stuff that's mystical. It's, he does things on the cue, on the table that other people don't understand. And I'll tell you, and I've got a guy sitting right next to me that played him one whale of a match yesterday, Nick Varner. You were down 4 nothing or 4-1, Nick? 4-0. 4-0 and battled your way back. And you played some of the best pool I've seen, and this guy can really play. And when you pressure him, he seems to rise to the occasion. At least he has most of the time. In 1995, he won five tournaments, including this eight-ball championship. Well, you hit the nail on the head when you said he rises to the occasion. I promise you one thing. When you beat this guy, you will not walk away and say, I played a mediocre game. You will walk away saying, I played a great game. <laughs> it's one of those, look what I just did, mother. Let me call you on the phone and talk to you about it. And he's such a marvelous player to watch play the game. All the way up in the corner. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that had kind of a little wobble to it, yeah. but it fell. He used the whole pocket. Tom. Yeah, yeah. That's my kind of game. Use the whole pocket <laughs> and then have a little light axe in your pocket. You make the corner just a little bit rounder. <laughs> Well, I'm surprised, uh, Tom. We haven't seen your favorite shot yet in this no, match. No, not a combination uh, yet. I'm a little bit disappointed in the whole <laughs> thing, too, but it's early. It's early. I told you about the, as you watch um, Efren Reyes in action, why the um, point totals that determine um, who gets a share of that pot. $250,000 at the end of the year. Uh, Nick Varner's up there with 350 points. Buddy Hall, 200 points. Each and every week on the Pro Billiard Tour, it is very, very important. Yeah, Buddy, I uh, just... Uh Buddy, you just uh, signed with uh, and got a new cue, uh, Mayuchi Q. Uh, you've got off to a strong start this year. Uh, how's the cue working out? Uh, it's working out great. I signed with Mayuchi, and I've, uh, the worst I've finished is fifth and sixth. Off to a really good start. All right, Efren Reyes has taken a 2-0 lead in the race to eight. We'll be back with more of the World 8-Ball Championship from the Riviera Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas after this pause. You're watching the World 8-Ball Championship. Efren Reyes is playing Johnny Wetch in this championship match, and Reyes now leads two games to none. He had the first break, didn't make a ball. Wetch was on his way, called the 8-Ball, missed it, and, of course, that racked that one over to Efren Reyes. He came back and broke the second rack and ran it and called the 8-Ball and made it. Now he's got the third break. He's made one ball. And he looks, oh, I thought he was going to scratch for a moment there. Well, he made a stripe on the side, so he's got, uh, looks like he's got the stripes again. Looks like there's a lot of table between the cue ball and the stripes. Yeah, I've seen that go against a couple people this, this week. In fact, I've seen it go against a couple, more than a couple. You make a stripe and then don't have a shot at a stripe. Yeah. Well, you still have stripes. Yeah, they're yours, good, bad, or indifferent. Reyes has advanced into this uh, championship defense. Remember, he is the current eight-ball champion. He defeated Steve Dem um, Barolsky, Jim Rempe, Jimmy Wetch. He lost to Wetch, excuse me, beat Nick Varner, Ismael Paez, Rafael Martinez, and then defeated Steve Miserak, 8 nothing. And now Jimmy Wetch is back, having defeated Johnny Archer, and here they are in this championship match. Oh, oh, Reyes. Nice is shot. that a touch? Huh? He yeah. broke out those two balls. He had that stripe touching the solid, and uh, he's already got him apart where he can play the uh, ten ball. He leads two nothing in the race to eight. Oh! I can't believe it. Oh, that's uncharacteristic. He can't uh, oh boy! I, that's I, very uncharacteristic. Oh! Well, I tell you. The crowd responds, and Reyes just looks at it. He's as stunned as anybody, and <laughs> Wetch realizes he's got a new lease on life, and it's kind of like tear out my eyes. I've seen everything now when <laughs> Reyes leaves that nine ball hanging right in the side pocket. Yeah, he's got to be awful happy because it looks like he's going to be three three games down yes. with uh, Ephraim breaking, and now he's got a chance to make it two to one, and he's breaking. What a, what a big <laughs> difference that Boy, is. Boy, indeed. He's got to control himself now and gain his composure. 
he uh, had an opportunity to take a one nothing lead and didn't make the eight ball after the opening break. And now he's got a chance to run the table. Scott Smith, who's the referee. He needs to go after the two ball as fast as, as soon as possible. The two's laying over by the nine. He's going to probably play position to the to the two off of the three. Yeah, he's got the nine right in the middle of a couple of his solids. That nine's kind of position where it makes it a little tough to get in there for position. Uh, so uh, that's a little critical for him. The good news is that Reyes didn't make it, and the bad news would be that Reyes left it in a spot that's going to cause him a couple of problems in positioning himself for other solid balls, huh? Now, if he can make that seven, uh, if that goes by the uh, one ball, uh, he can bounce off the rail and have a pretty nice angle on the two without it getting real thin. The danger here, Tom, is if he gets off the rail too much, that two gets to be a tough ball to pocket. Right, I believe the, the seven passes. Looks like it does, doesn't it? Seven will pass down in the corner. If you're watching Jimmy Wetch, youngster out of uh, Bloomington, Minnesota. He may have to play the one before he plays the two, huh, buddy? Oh, that oh, was that a was smart move. Very there. nice. That very was, nice. I took that you. nine right out of uh, out of any problem for him at all. Just dropped it right in the side pocket. Now he's got clear sailing. Oh boy, that was good thinking there. That sure was. And of course, as long as he made the solid ball, why well, he can put that uh, higher numbered ball in without any penalty at all. You know, he's got the one out of the way and we'll take the two up. Here's how uh, Jimmy Wetch got to this uh, championship go. Uh, Jimmy Wetch um, defeated Ray Schultz, Rodolfo Luat. He beat Reyes. He lost to Miserac, came back and beat Davenport. And now here he is earlier having defeated Johnny Archer. And now he's playing for the first major title of his young professional Ooh. career. Kind of wobbled a bit going in, didn't uh, it? He used huh? the whole pocket <laughs> on that one. <laughs> What's he, has, will he take the six ball now or what's uh, his next bit of strategy here? What do you think? I believe he'll shoot the six and then try to get a nice angle on the five to get position on the eight. Mm -hmm. It's you. just a matter of preference whether you play above the 12 or below the 12. He went, came below it, that's perfect. Now the five ball and then the eight. Remember, he's trying to get back into this match. He's down two nothing. He's going to play the five and eight in the same pocket. Lovely. Nice position. Nice touch there. Now he's got a little tool to reach over and he must be careful. Oh, boy. You know, he got uh, boy. He almost, he almost touched that ball. Right. right. He almost fouled the cue ball. He slipped. All right. 2-1, and young Jimmy Wetch is right back into this match with Reyes, and he, of course, now has the break. Now, you notice that the um, ball is uh, queued up, or, uh, excuse me, set to, the cue ball is set inside the box, and that's where you'll, you break from. Yeah, that's a rule we changed this year where you have to break uh, not only in this eight ball tournament, but in our nine ball tournaments, yeah. and everybody seems pretty happy with it. It makes the break shot a little bit harder. You guys, of course, and all of you people on this tour, um, all 61 of the pros that took part to start it, uh, can play any game. Uh, Steve Miserac, I guess, could win any game that you play with a stick and a ball. He's done it for two and a half or three decades. Is eight ball that big a change for you from the nine ball? I know you play the nine ball the whole well, year. Nine ball and eight ball are really two two different games. But with the nine ball, you have one shot. You you play in rotation. You know you're always going to have to take off with a one ball. With eight ball, you have options. You have multiple options. You you kind of get to pick the way you want to go. So you dictate what the game wants. And playing nine ball, nine ball dictates to you. And I suppose Nick Varner, nine ball has more uh, strategy to it and more you get the push out in nine ball. You don't have it in eight. Uh, well, the man is you've got to make the balls in rotation so there's a chance to to hide it and snooker them and everything else. Yeah, on eight ball, uh, uh, Tom, uh, one of the differences uh, is the fact that when you're playing the, the so or your pattern of balls, uh, you have a lot of choices to make. and. Uh, but still yet in the game, the break shot is, uh, if it's 
not as as important in nine ball. Just a, it's as a important in eight ball. Sometimes I think the break shots may be a little bit more important yeah. in this game. Yeah. And I think the biggest difference here that I found out in this tournament, even though you don't have as difficult the shots most of the time in eight ball, when you get just like a medium difficult shot, it seems like that shot's so much harder in nine ball. You would just take that shot for granted but there's so much pressure in eight ball because a nine ball right up to the nine you can play a defensive or a safety on the yep. nine yep. when you get down to just one or two balls in the eight ball there's hardly any way to play safe normally That's right and um, you were looking at Scott Smith who's our referee and the man in charge and uh, who is a tireless worker here on the uh, pro billiard circuit he um, is the man they all look to for the rules and regulations. He settles all disputes. If there's a rack that you can't quite get put together, call Scott. He'll pop in, whether it's on Monday of the tournament week or in the uh, semifinals or what have you. And uh, his word is law. It does a tremendous job. Jimmy has a big problem here. He has the 13 ball sets up there by the three up in the upper, upper left-hand corner. Uh, I don't believe that ball passes anything. He's going to have to figure out a way to get to that ball. You better start thinking about it right away. Yeah, he has to move something over there because I don't even think he has a bank, buddy. Uh, I think the three's got it uh, blocked. The one's got it blocked for a, even a bank shot. Uh, he's almost got to move something on that side of the table. He does indeed. And, of course, um, as our two experts have uh, pointed out, I think, if he gets down to where that ball is what he's got to play, he's got to move it out and make it available to put in a pocket before it becomes the last ball for him to play. Because Watch if he this, can't... Tom, uh, I he's think he's do? getting ready to play a combination, your favorite You're shot, kidding. maybe. I know you like that shot. I'd love it. <laughs> I'd love it. I tell you, Nick Varner is the master of the combination. He's got more trick shots <laughs> than a monkey with a new rope. I'm telling you, he's mm. got moves I shot those two combinations earlier tonight just for you <laughs> Tom. I knew beautiful. you'd like them <laughs> they were beautiful he has to lay right against the rail on this shot he needs to actually hit the seven trade places with it oh Ooh, he, he overcut it oh missed boy. the seven yeah he was trying to do everything you said buddy Hall and he didn't get anything done did he you know, this is kind of an interesting rack for uh, Ephraim right here. Uh, buddy, you think he's going to try to make a ball here or play a defensive shot? Well, well he may uh, go to a strategy shot, but... Uh, I believe he's playing safe. See, I don't know if that's any good or not. That, He's uh, left him a shot on yeah. that stripe out by the eight ball. I don't think right. he, I think he planned on leaving him behind the seven there. Uh, in fact, he might even have a shot to go down there and tear out that 13 and that nine ball's hanging. He does have a shot. Here's, here's a problem right here with the 13 and the three. What he's going to try to do is pocket this ball down in this corner, bring the cue ball into this area right in here to mess with that cluster of balls. He's going to have to spin the cue ball quite a bit, but he, he does have a shot. He might not be able to get down there unless he kisses off the one. He might have to, I don't know if he can get down low enough without hitting that one first and then trying to glance into him. He didn't even play it. He, he's trying to play a kiss shot off that 13 and three in the right left corner, but I think he might have snuckered himself on the uh, 13. See, that's what he's looking at. He was going to play a kiss shot on the 13 and he got uh, behind the one. He has no shot now, unless he can uh, shoot it to 13. If he, can, if he can't shoot it to 13 now, all of that stuff there is just a problem for him. He's looking to try to get an angle to bank, move the three ball out of the way, cross corner, but I'm not sure he can uh, keep from getting snuckered here, buddy. I don't think he can stop his ball there. Maybe he can. He's going to have to bump that uh, ball. Well, he can hit the 13. Can you make it? Mm, uh, I think you have to three rail it. I think he'll play a three rail shot on it here. Play the cue ball, try to scoot the cue ball up to the end rail somewhere. Either that or he's going to try to play a cross corner and move the three out of the way so it goes. Uh, one of those two. He could play two in the side too, but I think he'd be. 
I think what he may do is play this ball three rails to this corner pocket, landing the cue ball right here. So in case it does go, he'll have a shot down in the corner with the eight ball. Mm -hmm. And the stripe is the ball he's playing, the 13 ball, and the three ball. Was Buddy, it? you hit the nail on the head. That's what he was trying yep. to do. The thought yep. was there. He tried to make it three rails. He just caught it too sharp. Now, that's what I mean, Tom, when you get down close to the end. There's no place to hide a nine ball. You can play safe up to the last ball. That's, that's why right. there's so much pressure that's right. running out in this game. Here I felt he... more pressure running out in this game this week than I do in nine ball, buddy. It, yes. He has one ball to make, and he didn't make it, and now he has left the table relatively wide open for Reyes, who's up off the chair and uh, ready to run the rack on him here. And the thing about eight ball also, when when you have one ball left on the table and you miss, more than likely you're not going to ever get another open shot at that no. ball. No. Even if your opponent can't make a ball like there's usually he's got six or seven of his balls out there and he usually just, if he doesn't have a good shot, he puts you behind one of them That's and right. then if he gets a ball in hand, then it's over. Right. right. Like now, a moment ago, Reyes shocked everybody in the building, and I'm sure you, who are acquainted with how good he can play, by leaving one hanging right there in the middle of the side pocket. But you only get one shot, generally, a, a season like that from Reyes that you can take your advantage. i tell you what, the way he looked at that nine ball still sitting on the table like somebody picked his pocket. <laughs> That's right. Reyes trying to take an advantage of 3-1 in the race to eight. You're watching the World 8-Ball Championship. We're at the Riviera Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. I'm Tom Kelly with two of the great players the game has ever had, Nick Varner, Hall of Famer, and Buddy Hall, the rifleman. They and the entire Pro Billiard Tour all enthused about this magnificent new season starting here tonight. A million and a half dollars in prize money. A million and three quarters. Yeah, you throw that to it's almost to, right. million, isn't it? We're <laughs> talking almost two million bucks. That's right. Guys. Oh, it's almost tripled over what it was last well, uh, year, Tom. Uh, we're just so excited. Everybody's so happy. All you see is smiles on the pro tour now. <laughs> the way to go. Reyes calls it and puts it in the side pocket. He now leads 3-1. We'll be back with more of this eight ball championship match from the Riviera after this message. Reyes leads three games to one, and he now has the break as he steps up to the table. Scott Smith uh, says, play away, Mr. Reyes. He leads uh, Johnny, uh, Jimmy Wetch by a 3-1 count. You see leads change, you know, back and forth, back and forth in the eight ball matches. I don't see hardly any problems here. I, I know he's, I feel like he's going to have to take the solids because of this ball right here. It seems like that everything is opened up for him. I see clear sailing from there. That's his choice, and he starts out. Got the six ball up in the corner. Well, that's a big oh, factor in this game is uh, you get a good shot with the balls laying in pretty good position. That's pretty important in winning these matches in this eight ball. Wow, he hit that ball very short. Yeah, he, he did. I thought it was a lock to clean up that end of the table without a whimper, and he doesn't have really a good angle on that six ball, does he? Yeah. No, he's a little thin. He's going to have to go probably with a long shot on that uh, orange ball. Uh, down in this the is the ball that he wanted to play position yeah, on. Yeah. I believe this is the ball he's going to have yeah. to shoot at. He wanted to come all the way out to play the six in the corner, but now he has to come with a long shot, and the only balls he can play position on are close to other balls. Well, and even as good as Reyes is, there's a lot of table between that cue ball and the object ball. He does have a sweet stroke, though, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Well. He hit it well. Oh, he's so smooth, and he's such got such a great tempo and rhythm. It's that's why the people really like to watch him play. He just looks so good at the table when the cue ball's moving around, and all he seems to slide right where it needs to be. Yeah, this is a matter of uh, preference here. Myself, I would probably play the one, then the two, then go up table for the six. Do you yes. have a shot to go to play position on the two? 
he may shoot the two and try to play position. I mean, shoot the six, try mm -hmm. to play position on the one. I don't yeah. like that because the ten's laying there. I believe he'll end up shooting the one. I like getting the one out of the way, but I do too. But I he's think not this is the wrong it. shot. He's I'm going sorry. for the six. I think this is the wrong shot. He's coming all the way down for that two ball, huh? He's got to land right in there That's with it. That's right. He's got to stop right there if he's going to. He's okay. He, can, he can pass by that and make it, huh? I think so. I'll tell you what, he's, he may have to play that one in the corner. I would have rather played it in the side and then did that. Shot the one first. It shows you in this game you do have a choice, don't you, buddy? Now he's going to be in trouble if the ball keeps rolling. I'll tell right. you what, I think he snuckered himself. I think he did, too. He, he might be. be able to cut it in that right corner pocket. It'll be touchy whether he has enough room to make that ball or not. It's close. Whether he can hit enough <laughs> of it or if the I believe oh, though I believe that stripes in the way. I do too. I tell you, it is a shot worthy of the man's talent though. If he can pull it off, it'll be something. <laughs> He's gonna try to kick it in one ray on. He is good at these shots. What a shot. What can you say about that one? But and you know, it Marvelous. appeared that it was such a routine shot if he'd have made it before he tried for the six. And then he turned it into a difficult shot. And now he calls the eight ball and wins it. Take another look at Reyes as he almost snookered himself, came off the rail and put it right back into the side pocket. Magnificent. And then, of course, simple to put the, here's the shot. He hit it well. He hit it to right speed to follow right on through. And so Reyes continues. He leads now 4-1. After the first five games, it's a race to eight and the World Eight Ball Championship still to be decided. We'll be back with more after this. We continue with our coverage with the World's Eight Ball Championship. We're with the Pro Billiard Tour. This is the Camel Pro Billiard Series, our first television stop. We'll have 14 major championships. You'll watch them on television throughout the year. Efren Reyes, seated number two in this tournament, playing for the championship that he's defending. Made a ball up in the corner. He leads 4-1 against uh, Jimmy Wetch, young man out of Bloomington, Minnesota. Reyes might have just made that one ball shot a little tougher just so we'd sit here and ooh and ah about it, gentlemen, because he, <laughs> he had a big opportunity to routinely put it in that side, and he turned it into a marvelous shot. A crowd-pleasing yeah, shot. Indeed, indeed. The only thing I can see here, it's these two balls here. If he takes the stripes, he's going to have to go with those right now. He has, to, I believe he has to shoot the stripes because this is the 13 ball right here. It blocks the three. He's going to go with the solids, I think. I don't understand that. Maybe he has to. Oh, did he make a solid? He might have just made yes. one. Oh, if he That's made right. a solid. Good, good call. Nicky, I wasn't paying attention. I'm to sorry, that I was asleep. Because I'm I was sure too. if he had a choice, he wouldn't pick that three no. where it, I mean, pick the low ones where that position of that three is. That's going to be the key to this rack is, is the three and 13 in the upper right corners. You've got to get in and get that red ball. Right, he's going after it right now. He's going after the three right now. Oh. Didn't put enough on it. He didn't gonna, leave himself any bargain sure with that five ball either, did he? He's going to play this three off that stripe, I believe. He's looking at it. Those two stripes that are together, he's going to play, play that three off the... Off the yeah, you got it on the nose. You'll like uh, this. Oh, that's... If he Watch pulls. this shot. Oh, what a beautiful <laughs> shot, huh? <laughs> Well, he's done about everything but pull the rabbit out of the hat here it's lately in this match, is it? unbelievable. And, Nicky, you were right on top of your game when you spotted that. And what a beautiful shot he played in the corner. Now he's coming over for the five ball. Look at this shot again. Is that something? Takes it right off the 13. And comes oh. across with the cue ball to get position for the eight ball, huh? Beautiful. Beautiful. Reyes makes it look so easy. He's having a marvelous tournament. Came out of the loser's bracket, I might add. And so far is defending his title in magnificent fashion. He has taken a 5-1 lead 
over Jimmy Wetch as we battled here at the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, the World Eight Ball Championship. More action in a moment. The action continues as Aaron Reyes, a 5-1 now after six games. It is the race to eight. Nice crowd on hand. There's been 4,000 uh, members of the APA, the American Pool Players Association, uh, having their national eight ball tournament here. Men and women from all of the country, teams, magnificent competition. And quite frankly, the Pro Billiard Tour players accommodate the APA by playing this eight ball championship in conjunction with their big week-long tournament. So it's a hand-in-glove situation. The pros are only too willing to go along and support the amateur uh, competition. And uh, all in all, it works out very nicely. And uh, the Riviera Hotel has been awash with pool cues and guys talking the game and everything else. Been a very busy week. He has a little bit of a problem here with the 13th ball that is laying right down here by the six. Balls attempted by Reyes, 28. Balls pocketed, nice, huh? Shooting percentage, 96. 87 for Jimmy Wetch. Made 20 out of 23 balls. Pat Fleming, uh, Boy, those, Reyes uh, did it again, didn't they? Those statistics, uh, you know, uh, Reyes hadn't pocketed that many more balls for no. him to be so no. far ahead. That that's first right. game where Jimmy ran out the table that's and then right. made eight in the wrong pocket, uh, that's kind of misleading on those balls pocketed on those that's statistics. Right. That's right. Yeah, Matt Fleming keeps those statistics and <laughs> does an outstanding job, huh? Yes, he does. Yeah, that's great. That's a great uh, innovation to our telecast, and we... Thank you, Marissa, for his concerted hard work in that area. Well, now, you know, the crowd, anxious to see this young player from Minnesota uh, show, their, show them uh, how good he can play. They were amazed again that Reyes missed one, kind of a long shot across the table, and now here's Wetch up with a chance to go, and cue ball is at the top of your screen over by the side pocket, and that's the five ball he's looking at. See what he has to do. It looks like to me that... Uh Plus, he's going to play a combination. It looks like he needs to get that four out of there and come back over for the seven so he can get the one. The 14 is blocking that one mm -hmm. on the top of the screen. He has to move the four to open up the one, and he has to, he has to make the six that's laying down here behind the 13. He has a couple problems here. Yeah, that 14 and one uh, in the on the top of the screen. Uh, that's what he's thinking about, and it, that four is blocking the hole over here. So he almost needs to make it before he moves that seven, so he can get position on the one. Now he's going to do just that. That was a too, nice Nick. shot. Yeah. That Beautiful. was great thinking because now he can come across for the seven, and then he'll fall good on the one. So he'll put that four ball in the pocket up to the left-hand side of your screen, up in the corner. He may and be thinking about the six right now, too, fellas. Well, he's walking that way, down that way, looking thing over. Remember, he's trailing now 5-1. This is a golden opportunity after a miss by Reyes for which to get right back into this competition. There's the four ball, took oh, it out of the way. That, that's he's no good one all the way down for the six, and oh, uh, no good. No, that's He no might good. be able to go rail first, though. See where he might be able to go to the right of, on the screen, it's to the left of the 13 and come off the rail and kick the six in this corner pocket. If he has a shot at the three, I believe he'll shoot at the three. I don't know if the three is any. He really. He probably. He's going to try that. Yeah, six he's ball. going rail first. Oh, Good nice shot. shot. Nice shot. It's that just, opened everything. Yeah, that made it nice there. Really. Yeah, he can choose the three ball now, or he can go up and shoot the seven, or whatever. And the one ball is waiting for him up there. Good position. It's in the golden opportunity here to run the rest of this rack, isn't it? The eight ball is the only thing that I see that uh, could give him a problem. If he doesn't land just right on the one, then he may have trouble getting to the eight. Mm -hmm. It's right there next to the nine, but he could put it down in that lower right-hand corner with the right position, couldn't he? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a shame he had to move that three. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to save that one to the last one. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it's close to the eight. Yeah. <laughs> now he's got to go forward. 
He yeah. doesn't want to follow up underneath the 14, but he has to have a down angle to get to the eight. He don't like it either. He doesn't like having to I roll that ball. What, no. I wouldn't like it either. I'd like to bounce off that end rail, but that 14's in the way, isn't it? Yeah, yep. but the only problem with popping this shot, you don't get the forward motion that you need. You don't get to go yeah. forward. There's a shot you have to roll and just settle for the top of the cue ball. See? He's oh, boy. what a nice touch <laughs> that was. Very nice. Well done. Very that proves nice. he's playing great right there yeah, when you yeah. can shoot that shot. That's a hard shot to control. That is. And considering that he's playing for the first major championship that he's had a, a real crack at in his young pro career, why there's all kinds of added pressure on Jimmy Wayne. Well, it's the first time he's played for the world title, and uh, those are hard ones to win. Boy. Nice. He's going to play it. Looks like he fell real good. That was great position there. It's not, it doesn't look like the easiest of shots to me, am I, is it? Well, when you're down five to one, it's a real tough shot. Boy, <laughs> but, <laughs> but as a rule, he would make this shot, and I believe he'll make this one. I believe he'll make it. At that the angle, there's, there's a lot of uh, space there to go through, isn't there? Now that you see that low camera angle. Yeah, he's got plenty of room. It's just uh, like Buddy hit the nail on the head when you're down five to one. This looks a little tricky. <laughs> Nailed it. All right, well right done. Then. Wetch makes it now 5-2 in his uh, championship match with uh, Efren Reyes, and he'll be back, and so will we, and he'll be there with the break. Could narrow the margin. Don't go away. All right, Efren Reyes leads 5-2. Jimmy Wetch will have the break. It is a race to eight for the World 8-Ball Championship. I'm with uh, Nick Varner and Buddy Hall. I'm Tom Kelly. And I'll tell you, the race to eight, you don't get a chance to make many mistakes, do you guys? As a rule, with this caliber of players here, one mistake is enough. If you make one mistake, they'll get you. And it's liable to not just cost you that game, it's liable to cost you three or four to go with it. Yeah. They make you pay the full penalty. Yeah. You know, Jimmy's in a position here where he desperately needs to run out a rack or two and tighten up the match a little bit. Got to make a ball. And he needs a ball on this break. He didn't get it, I don't Boy, did you see the three ball? Did everything but fall in? Just rattled around down there and came right back out and refused him. And look how the balls are spread out on the table. Yeah. But I don't know what kind of shot Ephraim's got with that cue ball so close to that stripe. Yeah. That's why the break is so important. If you make a ball on the break, sure, you have to take that, whether it's a solid or a stripe, you have to take that denomination of balls. But if you don't make a ball on a break, then your opponent comes in with an option. He can play either ball and liable to park you in the chair for a week. <laughs> yeah, having that choice is awful powerful. Now he's going with the stripes. Man, he just ripped that thing at it, didn't he? Uh, huh? I don't know how he landed there. He better look, find something up table. I think the 14, the 14 is uh, okay, but. He's, uh, I think he's found a position where he's gonna really have to make uh, a bank or a tough shot, maybe, if he can't hit that 14. Well, that might have been a kind can of Can he get by the 8 there? Yeah, I believe so. I believe he can shoot at the 14. But he may not want to shoot at the 14. If it's if it's blocking the two ball, he may not want to open it up yet. Well, he's got a little bit of a problem with the uh, two red balls on the left lower left part of the screen. One's right, one's a solid, yeah. and that solid blocking is... Uh, Pass straight in that corner pocket. Mm -hmm. The three ball. Got him hung up a little bit. I don't believe he wants to shoot at the 14. I believe he, he may have room to make it, but I don't think he wants to open that pocket up right now because of the way the three and the, uh, the 11 are laying. Ooh, I think he might. Oh. That's the worst thing he could have done there. Still, now Jimmy has to deal with with the four ball over by the 14. He may end up, uh, of course, he's going to try to break it out if he can, but he may have to end up banking that ball. Uh, he's got to go after it as soon as possible. You mentioned Mayuchi. Jimmy's uh, just signed a new contract with him. He's wearing a Mayuchi shirt. You see that out there, Nicky? He said he got a new cue. 
We're yeah. working with it this week. He's in the finals of the world championship with his new kid. How about that? It's working pretty good. And <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Working I think this good. is the first tournament he's played since he got it. Uh, yeah. It is the it first is. tournament. Yeah, he got the cue this Monday, you told me, this past Monday. And I asked him, I said, Jimmy, how long did it take you to get used to your new cue? He said, well, as soon as I got it, I practiced eight hours a day, three days in a row. Uh -huh. <laughs> After all, there's uh, <laughs> almost $2 million out there that a guy could latch <laughs> onto a big chunk of it. Well, there's so many exciting uh, things happening on the Pro Billiards Tour this year. Uh, we're picking up uh, really good sponsors and yeah. uh, our new television contracts. The commissioner's been busy. Uh, we're getting uh, the rest of our tournaments the rest of the year, Tom, as That's you right. well know. That's right. We're televising every single yeah. one of them, yeah. the finals, and uh, the fans been asking for it, and this year they're, they're going to get some really serious pool. There's a nice ball made by uh, Wetch. Indeed, um, it'll be down in San Juan, Puerto Rico, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Fort Lauderdale, Charlotte, North Carolina, New Orleans, Nashville, Denver, Atlanta, Memphis, uh, McAfee, New Jersey, the Great Gorge, Providence, Rhode Island, then ended up with the Legends of Nine Ball at Commerce, California in January. And the tour comes your way. Come out and watch the world's best play. These are the finest pool players in the world, and they'll show you shots you never dreamed possible. Well, with that schedule, my wife's got my suitcase packed and ready to go, Tom. <laughs> I yeah, saw she's got hers packed, too. She's going <laughs> with you. <laughs> You're right Bet there, she buddy. Is. I, I saw that beautiful lady earlier tonight. She was watching uh, Mr. Nicky do his thing out there. He has to try to come into the back of the four ball here. I don't know why he didn't shoot at the shot before. Leave one more ball out there to look at. See, he has a ball on the end rail. So if he can come into the back of the four, if he can shoot this ball on the side. Can he go into it right now off the six on the side or? No, I think he has to hit the end rail, but he has oh. the, the three ball is on the end rail. This is a perfect time to go for it if you're going to go. Right. He wants a little better angle. See, that's the way, reason he didn't shoot it the first time. Scott Smith down there looking very carefully. Came down, busted that four if ball it high up. Oh, perfect. What Beautiful. a nice shot. Beautiful. Beautiful. Do you shoot it now or do you shoot the five? I think I think I shoot the five. Well, the reason I wouldn't shoot it now is if that cue ball, if I can't avoid that the three. red stripe, the three right. on, or the red solid on the end rail. Right. So he may be forced here to try to play the five and either draw back or play the six before he comes down for these two balls. Now, does that eight go by that 14, buddy? That eight's it, a problem yes. too. I believe the four. I believe the eight does go by the fourteen. You know, uh, looking at the, that, at the cue ball and the five ball, to me that looks like a tough shot. The cue ball is so close to that five ball that seems to me to be a tough shot. You hit the nail on the head, but Tom. But it just uh, it just seems that it's a tough angle. I know you can make ball. that. I know he did, but it just seemed to me that it was so close to the cue ball that he'd have a better shot of two and a half feet down here in the corner. Didn't do it. I believe he was distracted then a little bit on that Think five. So? Boy, that is. He didn't seem to stay down real good with that no. shot. Uh, he's certainly not worried about this first shot. No, I shouldn't think. Reyes leads five games to two. It is the eighth game. It's a race to eight to determine the I think he may have to play a kiss shot now, on that middle stripe off the five, maybe, you think? I think he's going to go two rails across right now and try to play the other ball up in the same pocket with this ball right now. Oh, oops. That's what he tried to do, and the side got in the way. He was going to go back and forth across table and try to play the 12 down in the same pocket as the 14. Now, with the ball in hand, can we place the cue ball anywhere on the table now? Yes, we can. Yes, Jimmy gets to put it any place he wants, Tom. And he wants straight in on one of these lower balls. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. A scratch or ball in hand after the break, Nick Varner, you must play it at the end toward the rack. Is that correct? The yeah, you behind don't have the to line. Play, Is that correct? You had to play it behind the line. Yeah. Not out of the box only, but someplace behind, that behind line. the line. You have to shoot at a ball forward of the head string, they call it. I know one thing. I'd like to say that green ball for my last ball, the an eight ball, oh. the last shot for the eight ball they call the key ball. And usually you try to leave it as close to that eight as you can. Yeah, this and is the old hit and stick routine is what Nikki's talking about. Here you want to play straight in on the six, so all you have to do is just shoot and stop. 
before you play the eight. That's, right. that's uh, what they call your key ball and eight ball, and everybody likes to stop it before they shoot. The <laughs> right, he'll play a two rail angle out here so he can try to get dead straight in on the six. If and memory one, serves correct, just get nice off the off rail. rail. He yeah, just wants, wants to bounce off. Yeah, that's good. This is the second uh, break opportunity that um, that Jimmy has had against Reyes. You don't get many of those in a lifetime, much less two in the same game. And now the eight ball in the corner. And this would narrow things considerably to 5-3 if indeed he can put it in. And he oh, does. Man. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sorry, Tom, but he, he used the whole pocket Indeed, again. He hit the he, side rail. He's my kind of player. 5-3. <laughs> Reyes leads Wedge. <laughs> but it is a very close match now for the World 8-Ball Championship. We'll be back to see how it turns out in a moment. From the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, the Pro Billiards Tour presents the Camel Pro Billiards Series. Brought to you by AMF Playmaster, bringing quality to the table. American Professional Billiards. And by Mayuchi, used by more pros than any other custom cue. Action continues here in the uh, World 8 Ball Championship. Jimmy Wetch now has the break. He's trailing Ephraim Reyes five games to three. It is a race to eight. I'm Tom Kelly with Hall of Famer Nick Varner, the little colonel from Owensboro, Kentucky, and the rifleman Buddy Hall. Buddy, you're down in Florida now, are you? Tampa. Tampa. Yes. You got a pool hall down there? A little interest in one? Uh, well, I have an interest in one, yes, but... Uh, Good. My, my major plan is to open a new one. Great. I'm getting ready to open a 40-table room. That's beautiful. We wish you great success with it. Thank you. But well, that, I think, was a critical break there for Jimmy. He failed to pocket a ball, and if uh, it's a little hard to catch, it's going to be hard for him to catch up one rack at a time, Tom. Well, and one chance at a time. He's got to wait for Reyes, uh, who's given him two opportunities to get back in. Hence, it's only 5-3. And in Jimmy's uh, behalf, why well, he's been equal to the task when given the opportunity. But Reyes doesn't give him any chances to get back right. into a game. There is no choice here. He has to take the stripes. The only... Well, I wouldn't shoot the nine now. I would shoot the 13 first. That is w with the understanding that I could get position on the 12 in the side pocket. Well, he certainly is studying his options here very carefully. Uh, Reyes, of course, was just overwhelming in an 8 nothing uh, decision in the semifinals over Steve Miserak. And uh, the Miz, who's one of the great players this game has ever seen, just got off the stool twice, made a ball on two separate occasions, couldn't continue on with the rack in any shape or form, and Reyes just literally ate him alive. Well, it's a case where Steve really played such a great tournament, but yet in the match against Ephraim, uh, Ephraim played so good, Steve really never got much of a chance That's even right. to shoot. And That's it's right. kind of, from Steve's standpoint, it's a little bit disappointing, and I know he, I've had the same thing happen to me Let before. me tell you, he showed a great sense of humor, though, because when they came out to play this match, he was sitting in the chair, and he said, I'm ready. When do I play? And I <laughs> said to him, yeah, that time is coming, gone, Miz. And he said, well, I've only lost one game. He said, I ought to be able to continue in the crowd loved it okay he's cleared that ball he still has the he still has the uh, the 12 ball to deal with you know if that doesn't go in the side he will have to break it out because the five balls bu uh, blocking the uh, bank shot buddy right he may try to play position on the 15 to bump the five out of the way Efren Reyes, he's the defending champion. Or he could use the nine if he comes up to the middle of the table and then come across one rail. All he has to do is move the seven, just touch it. But uh, he's got a lot of choices here. He's, he's going to move it back against it. If he's not careful, he's going to move it right back against the I five. think he froze that thing. Oh, no, he didn't, but very yeah. close to it, didn't he? I think he wanted to be just a little bit more right of those balls. Uh, Tom, so he could come around two rails and break that out. Evidently, it doesn't go because uh, he doesn't. Uh, that could be the only problem with this table is getting uh, that seven and twelve apart where the twelve goes. 
I don't believe it does go on the side, buddy, it, it the way might, he's acting. Maybe it doesn't go because of the way he's acting. It uh, just... Or he might be kind of, uh, you know, worried about making a bad hit as he makes it in the side. It may be one of those that's really close. It looks like it to me. Looks like it would really oh. be a very close thing. If he goes after that, Scott Smith, I'm sure, is going to be hunkered down looking right over his shoulder, watching every move. Well, if it don't go, he's got a big problem. He has a problem now. right now. Uh, he may have to turn around even and bank the nine. He may have to bank the nine or cut the 15 in the side. But here you're going to run into the eight. You don't want to be rolling that eight around too loosely. No, because if it finds a hole, <laughs> you yeah. got to sit down. The score's 5-4 then. Can he cut that 15? Oh, he's going to cut he's it gonna back. He's going to play it off the five and draw over and try to break those two balls out. He's going to play a kiss shot. What Tell a me shot. about that. Tell How me about that shot. That's beautiful. I finally saw it, buddy, just in yeah. the nick of time. The magician at it again. Boy, I tell you, he can find more ways. Look at that, a replay on that. Absolutely perfect. You know, that's what makes this eight ball such a tough mental game. You finally think your opponent's in trouble, and there's so many options out there sometimes that you don't see them all, and then he makes a spectacular yeah. shot like that, and then uh, he has ends a up... terrible shot here. That's right, he has. He hit a, I'm sorry, Nicky. He hit a terrible shot there. That eight ball is really tough to get on now. It's hard to play position on that eight from here. He's going to have to hit it with an inside cue ball. You're going to have to follow this ball. Go three rails, isn't he? Yeah. With low luck. With left-hand English. Well, well, he hit it great. Man, how good did he hit that ball? He hit it great. Oh, I'll tell you what. That. Look at that. Well, where does he put it? Does he put it over in the side pocket, take it up in the corner pocket at the end up now? Up in the upper right-hand corner. He'll, he'll pace this. He'll, he'll play it nice and slow, let the pocket grow. I this love the expression, let the pocket grow. Right. He plays at pocket speed, Magnificent. makes the pocket as wide as he can. Well, you're watching one of the best that ever picked up a stick, no question about it. Efren Reyes showing us some dazzling pool as he now advances and picks up an advantage now of six to three in the race to eight for the World Eight Ball title. We'll be back. Yes, buddy? Jimmy Wedge, did I call him, what did I call him? Johnny. Johnny, oh, I was thinking of Johnny Archer because he beat <laughs> Archer. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, Jimmy Wedge, young man from Bloomington, Minnesota. Well, I'll tell you, win, lose, or draw, it's been a great tournament for this young guy. And he has proved that he certainly belongs uh, right up there with the, the rest of the best of you guys. And I'm sure that his career is very much in front of him. He's going to be a, a big-time player on this circuit. Uh, he's already a big-time player. He's a really good player. He's tough to beat. Well, he's already tough as beat as almost anybody. Yeah. There are no easy, uh, I'll walk right through this guy matches anymore, other No. Huh? <laughs> no. Boy. No, Uncle Tom, you figured that out right away. Boy, no. I tell you. <laughs> and when you throw in a million and a half dollars and then 250,000 more, that is some kind of rainbow pot at the end of the <laughs> pot of gold at the end of the circuit. Yeah, everybody's aiming a lot harder this year. <laughs> <laughs> I can promise you. <laughs> Nick says everybody's aiming a lot harder. Yep. No more careless shoves at it. In fact, I've played a couple guys. I thought they were playing for their life. <laughs> Not sure they wasn't. <laughs> they might have been. Yeah. The sheriff with the foreclosure paper might have been coming after him there. Looking for a way out. Yeah. In case you've just joined us, why um, the young man Jimmy Wetch defeated uh, Johnny Archer. Very good match. 8 6, he put Archer away. And Archer, of course, player of the year a season ago, three time world champion, nine ball. And a guy who was uh, seated number one here in the tournament. Yeah, well, Johnny's really played uh, great the last four years. And he's just a youngster, too. He's just in his 20s, huh? This kid is 28 years of age, the one you're watching now. I believe him and Johnny's about the same age. 
Oh, oh. Mm. Well, I don't know, except that he missed it. Might be a combination of things, desperately needing to. I think a problem there is not only did he have to make the ball, but see the yellow stripe, the nine, is blocked by the six, and he was trying to get that loose where he could make it. So it was kind of a combination of trying to do a couple things on the same shot and some time. Your accuracy is just not quite yeah. as good when you're forced to do two things at the yeah. same time. Instead of getting one thing done, he was trying to do two and didn't get anything done, did he? So Reyes, left-handed. Don't let that startle you. Reyes can play left-handed. I think the entire rack and still shoot with the best of them. He does play good with either hand. Yeah. yeah. Man has an amazingly lovely touch with that stick. He a great stroke and he can put more moves on that cue ball than you would ever imagine possible. It is a oh. rare circumstance and we've seen it tonight here where he has left a couple hanging in the pocket that has enabled Jimmy Wetch to get into the game. He's not unbeatable of course. People have beaten him. But not many. He leads 6-2 in the race to eight. Trying desperately to get on the hill. Yep. The one's his only problem. He's got a tied up one ball that he needs to be taken care of. That's in that cluster over by the side pocket at the top of the screen, huh, buddy? Right. That may go up in the other corner. The corner he's looking at right now. If it passes there, then he may have an avenue. Doesn't look like it passes. No. He's certainly given it a lot of thought. It Isn't must he? not be too easy because uh, no. uh, he's uh, usually uh, moves around the table uh, pretty quick, but uh, all of a sudden he's come to a standstill here. We'll be back with more of the World Eight Ball Championship, but first, this important timeout. The winner, of course, will um, scoop up 20,000 large. Very nice. Part of the $100,000. This tournament payoff. I think he's going to draw into him here, buddy. I don't know. I don't or know. Or go about into like him off the other ball. He's going to have to deal with it. And he needs to deal with it before it's the last ball on the table. Yeah, and uh, it's either this shot or the next. You know, he might have got uh, the angle where he can't get up to him right now. He's looking to try to come off the rail, one rail, and hit the first stripe, and then hit the stripe that's a little closer to the one. Well, he's going to try to split him so he can come across table for position on the, on the ball up there. Oh, he oh, missed him. Just missed. Just but missed. But he's got a chance now. He's got another chance at him. Uh, he can play that in the left-hand bottom corner and then go over and uh, either hit the, uh, and try to hit the stripe that's next to the one. So the cue ball, watch it go toward that right side pocket. He missed it. He didn't even threaten the pocket. <laughs> well, it happens to the best of them. Now we saw him. Wetch a moment ago tried to do too much and didn't get anything done. And now here comes Reyes right back trying to make the ball in the corner and bust up that combination over in front of the side pocket. And now Wetch is right back up. He's better make his move. It's getting late. It is indeed. But not as late as it would have been if he'd run out this rack. Right. That was uh, for Wetch. That's got to be a breath of fresh air getting a shot uh, yeah. uh, at 6-3 instead of 7-3. Right. Yeah. yeah. See, the one ball doesn't have the, the uh, 13 tied up. The 13 will go up in the corner. It will pass the one and go in the corner, in the upper corner. If he just fall with good position on the 12. He's worried about this, uh, the two stripes there because uh, uh, it looks like when he plays the 11, he's going to stay on the same end with those two balls, and he doesn't have... Uh, Well, 
I guess they say something I don't. It looks like to me he could get in trouble here. You get in a lot of trouble if they don't shoot to 14. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Just for openers, he can get in a lot of trouble. You hit the nail on the head there. Now he may have a nice angle to just take take care of all of his problems. Played that position beautifully. He don't want to baby this one to stick behind it. He wants. Oh, he he missed it. Yep. <laughs> he yep. didn't touch it. No. But oh. he's got a shot on it for the corner. But now yeah. that nine doesn't go in a corner. Well, the nine doesn't go. He's going to have to draw up and play him. Right, it's a soft draw. He's going to play in the corner pocket. Right, the he's other gonna, corner. He's going to play that ball up in the other corner first. Side. Wow, he's going to play this ball first. Yeah, that's what I thought he was looking at. And he's well, got to draw can. back for the side of the other corner. I don't like this. The left hand side or corner, doesn't he? Yeah, I don't like this at all. No, the that ball must, must pass. Go. Yeah, he wouldn't. It has to pass. Yeah, but it must be a little tight. So uh, he better uh, aim pretty hard at this one. It's well, like a fat guy's belt. Well, let me tell that. you, that's tight. If it was that close, I wouldn't. Have, I, I would have never played that shot. I would have drew up and even played him in this uh, corner where his hands at uh, before. Yeah. If it's that tight, because he's got to hit this pretty hard on top of everything right. else, which you want to roll this ball if it's tight. He, he actually it. hit the ball and still made it. He's sure made pretty it. fortunate there. Yes, yeah. he is. Now the eight ball awaits him and a chance to move back and make this match 6-4 in the race to eight. Very important shot. Miss this and he's really down 7-3. He misses well, I this think one. he's pretty happy with this. If he misses this one, the fat lady will be on in five. That's right. <laughs> He'll be back out singing. Yeah. Well, he's okay. Yep. Beautiful. Tell you nice what, we, st we still got a match, it looks like. Yes, huh? we have, Nick Farner. We have indeed. So it is now 6-4. As Wetch has uh, battled his way back, he's down by two racks in the race to eight. The World Eight Ball Championship still very much in the balance. We'll be back to see how it ends up. You're watching the action here at the Riviera Hotel and Casino on the Strip in fabulous Las Vegas. That's Jimmy Wetch, young man out of Bloomington, Minnesota, who is battling the magician, perhaps the number one player in the world, Efren Reyes, the defending eight ball champion. The match is 6-4 in favor of Reyes, and Wetch has the all-important break. Needs to make a ball here, or a couple. He's got he one. He made one. Yeah. Made a, a stripe. stripe. That's what I mean. There you go. You made a stripe. Yeah. Now, nice talking to yeah. you. See if you can find <laughs> any out there that are close to where you want them. Huh? He's looking at this 14. Yeah, uh -huh. I think he's going for the 14, buddy. Yeah, we'll, we'll check his nerves right here. This shot here could be the turning point of the match for him if he can come with this shot. That tough, really, to cut that oh, ball in the corner? Man, this is a really a hard shot. At, he's shooting right over that pocket deep in the corner. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. This is tough, tough, tough. A lot of them. Wow. Beautiful. Boy, what did. a great yeah. shot that he was. He just treated it like it was nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Now, he's still got a problem with that nine ball on the right side of the table uh, uh, on the lower part of the screen. It's because uh, one of Ephraim's uh, solid balls is sitting there close to the hole. Right. So he's still got to deal with that, Tom. That's the four ball down there we're looking at in the bottom? Yeah. Sitting what, right there. Huh? Right. What you have to do now is that you have a chess game now. You have to pick it apart. I think that the shot here, if he if he can get by the ball, is to play this that one ball in the side, bump it over, and then try to make it give himself an angle to play position for the nine ball for the side pocket. You see what I'm saying? He's got to open that side up. You got to shoot that ball now. That clears the nine. All right. Here's a wedge now. This shot here clears clears the pocket for the nine. Now he's got to mm -hmm. just drop underneath the nine and play that ball in the same pocket. There he goes. He's looking at it. You called that one right, buddy. Uh, that's exactly what he's looking at. He wants to float right over between that four and nine and end up 
playing the ball on the side just like you described. I'm sure all the pool devotees looking in um, realize that while you're making this shot, you're also thinking a shot or two ahead. That there's yes. no reason to make this if you haven't got position for what else you want to do. And it's interesting. He walked over and put an angle on that to see what it would look like going in if he could get a ball behind it and do it. It's um, one or two shots ahead. You've got to be if you're going to play at this level. Well, this really requires a great touch here. Boy, Boy how did he, he hit? He might have really hit that good there. Boy, if he don't get a hand on that one. Yeah. He deserves a hand on that one. Now he just scoot up, play the 15. <laughs> this one's Katie bar the door. Are you ready, buddy? He's already got it. Yeah. <laughs> He's already, got, already got it in the bag. Yeah, That's right. I've got already marked the score on this one. Buddy's got him at 6-5 already. Yeah. If he makes the nine, it is six five because he'll be straight in on the fifteen, and all you're twelve in the eight right up in the corner. Now Scott Smith this is, is coming a big over shot to right see here. that he doesn't disturb another ball. Right, this is a big shot. All he's got to do is make the nine. Yep, got that. I don't see any problems from here. Do you, Nicky? He just got to draw back a little bit so he can get back down for the uh, a ball. Uh, I'd like to draw back close to the side there where I could just go. Yeah, where you can hit a nice roll shot. Yeah. Just roll it over yeah, there. I just like to bounce off and come back a couple inches, uh, maybe three, four inches, and uh, you should, it's easy. Hey, but only easy if you play like this Jimmy Wetch, I guess. Well, I don't know if I would have wanted to pull it back that far or not. How far back did he pull it? Oh, all he's got to do is roll forward oh, and bounce okay. off the he's rail. Right. He's he real good. Perfect. Right there. Beautifully done. <laughs> That's definitely my favorite shot in eight ball. <laughs> yeah, I'll take this one. I'll play these from here. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Jimmy. Well done. That was an excellent out. It is six to five, and the plot thickens. Close. Look at that eight ball go up toward that corner pocket. Uh, oh boy. Boy, that eight ball flew mm. out of that right. I believe it came up dry. Yes, he did. And he kind of stubbed his toe last time uh, he was at the table, so he knows he can't afford another. Uh, he needs to get out this time. Bill Efren, so who's a magnificent player, has really had a couple of mistakes more than one generally sees in a week of activity from him. All right, the stripes are not impossible to take here because. The, the 11 goes right off of the six and clears everything. He found a way to hit the solids, uh, Buddy Hall. Well, you know, I actually like the stripes better, Buddy, because uh, I would have started with the nine and then uh, tried to get on the red ball with the stripe and maybe played a kiss shot off the six and the side. Uh, you know, he, I actually like the other ones better. Well, he didn't like the two stripes on the side rail. Yeah. Now he has to make a tough shot. He has to make the seven. Seven's the only shot that he has, unless he shoots one of Tom's shots, the combination on the four seven. I don't believe he'll shoot that. I believe he'll play the seven. Well, I don't know. I don't know but what this championship match deserves a nice combination play here <laughs> by one of these great players. <laughs> one of the best combination players alive is sitting next to us, Buddy Hall, Nick Varner. He's got more combinations you can think of. Yeah. He showed me one earlier. I think he had 20 balls out there. I think he had two racks going at one time out there. Oh, 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 oh. The crowd is obviously, as most crowds are, in favor of this young guy here who is obviously the underdog in this match. And that happens no matter what you're playing, whether it's football, baseball, basketball, pool, or what have you. Right. They go for the underdog. And this kid's got a chance to tie this up at six now. You know, uh, I, I believe he curved his ball there to shoot that combination. He might have wrinkled, he he, he wrinkled his rock just a little bit. I think he might have been snuckered a little bit a there. A little buddy. bit. I tell you what, since he's got the stripes, I kind of like going for the 15 right now and going after that nine ball and five ball that are tied up because Ooh. you got the 13 hanging here. Do you like that, buddy, or is that a little too risky for you? Well, I'll tell you what. I, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> My heart won't hardly take that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Tampa's Mr. Conservative is going to uh, go for that. Well, I, I don't know. I might with, with this solid down here in the corner. Well, you can't. I mean, you have a stripe there. down here in the corner, right underneath. Yeah, the 13 bun. He just—he's got to come out of there with a shot. Well, he can't pull the trigger. It he must uh, be sitting pretty hard. I can see where 
It does look because if he brushes the five, it just doesn't figure to go. If it brushes the five, and if it and if it doesn't go, he's got his hands full getting out this rack. He's getting away from it. He's going to leave it for another moment, another shot. He's going in the corner. I'll tell you what, where that ball's at, I kind of like playing it if it's tight anyway, buddy. Because if uh -huh. it doesn't go, these uh -huh. balls are kind of laying over here where. See, they're really not blocking. They're not. They're not blockers. There, the way the nine's sitting. If it if it has a chance to go, you just about have to shoot it, because if you don't get it out of there, then your opponent, you're not. It's not blocking any of those other shots. Well, he's not going to have an opportunity to shoot at it now because he just couldn't get the ball on it now. Right. And and the point Nicky was trying to get to is he's not going to get much better than no, what he was that's right there. Exactly right. Yeah. Unless he gets above it and he's got a shot to put it all the way down in the corner down here. Can he can he maneuver that cue ball up here in the top left side to where he could play it back down in the corner. Well these balls he's having hard enough time with these uh -huh. three right here going from one ball to the next and I think he's got a problem right now because the six didn't move. Yeah he wanted because it's right in front of the eight it blocks both the green and the eight for the side pocket which are in the best position to maybe come over and get position on the nine or break it out. But uh, well, I don't if he, like um, going after it now, do you? If he makes that you stripe up and he's looking here to play the 10 and try to stop in time to play the 14 yes. in this corner yeah. and then slide over for the nine. But uh, that's no picnic either because when you fall on that nine, all them other balls are around you. It's hard to get back for this other stripe. This is, uh, I tell you what, by not playing that nine, uh, he's caused it may a lot cost of him. Uh, an important game in this match. He's well, he, now. I He's tell you what, if he doesn't out. go in the hole, oh. I tell you what, uh, oh boy. He's got to really be happy. As tough as this shot is, buddy, he's got to be pretty happy just to get this shot on the nine. He's he got a, nothing from here. He could have hooked himself around there. He's he, got nothing from here. He is dead in the water right there. I don't see any, I don't see anything. He can't make the nine. Well, the if corner. he can make the nine, what, what's he going to do from there? He's going to uh, bump the seven and just float past the other solid and play that ten a corner. Yeah. But then what do you do with the green one? He's, he's like dead in the say, water. He's, if he wins this game, he's made a championship shot. Now he's going to try to draw his ball, maybe play the 14 down in this lower left-hand corner is all I can see. Oh, he played safe. Or? No, he didn't play safe. He just missed it, I think. Yeah. But he got safe. He got pretty safe. Yes, he did. What has he left? He hasn't left much, has he? He may yeah. have left a combination billiard. A billiard combination, Tom. We'll be back with more of the World 8 Ball Championship. But first, this important timeout. We may see Ephraim not even try to make a ball here. Yeah, all he wants to do is just bump the seven. Well, suppose he just he put the cue ball right up here behind the five. Yeah, right Laid there. Laid it right in there. That'd really be a huh? yep. Yep. nasty position for Jim. I'm sorry I thought of it, but it is nasty, really. <laughs> okay. Tom, we're starting, we're starting to wonder about you. <laughs> yeah, maybe I don't want to play I golf with you one of these I got days. a little bit of a nasty streak. <laughs> <laughs> As warm and sweet and lovable as I am most of the time, I do turn nasty every now and again. That's exactly where I would play this shot. I would See, play that no, ball I'm to right there. But he's got to do. I would play, I would it play your shot, Tom, and definitely play, play your it shot up there. against that five, and I, you couldn't get it out of there with blasting powder. In it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I have to agree with you. If you can put him in there, Ephraim. Yeah, uh, now right now he's looking the other way. He's going to end up putting him right there, even if he's got to nip it and come to the end rail and back yeah. down. Yeah. That might be what he's thinking about. Well, he tried well, something why? similar to what you was talking yeah, about. Yeah, but he didn't I mean, do a very good. A he, he didn't do a very ball. good job of it. I don't, that's not. But he's right. He's got that. What is that? The ten ball he's down there. He the can. Shot. Yeah, but what does he play next, and where does he play it? Well, yeah, but take one at a time way. here if he's, huh? Comes this way and just see what it looks like after that. 
He's got to be really happy to be shooting at a, any kind of shot. I yeah, think really. so, too. I think Efren had a big time chance. Because if he bumped that one and fell just right, he could get over and play the 14 in the side of the corner. And that was better than the shot I figured he'd have because I figured he'd be shooting into the rail first just trying to contact one. Well, if he gets position and <coughs> makes this ball and gets position on another ball, he's really made a fabulous shot, no matter. Well, he's got to go, too. He's got to go for it. <coughs> oh. Just pocketing that 10 was, uh, and getting all the way back was hard. Yeah. <coughs> Efren would like to be able to shoot the six right now. Well, he did get the cue ball back there. He would have had a chance at that nine, but he had to make the 10 and he didn't. Well, he does have to make this ball if he goes for it because uh, there's no free lunch here. No. He is going to leave Wetch a chance to win the game if he would miss this too, so. What's he going to cut that in the corner? Yeah, yeah. I think he's going to play position on the end ball down here. No, he killed his rock. That's opened everything right up. Do you play the, the one in the uh, opposite corner pocket, buddy, uh, or do you play the five the ball? Five? Well, I don't know. It's just a matter of preference. It's really hard to tell from here. It's just a matter of choice there. I would think you'd take the five because the one ball is out more open, and you get a, you, well, he didn't really pull it back enough to get a real good angle for the corner on the one, did he? Maybe he's got to play the seven now, huh? I, I know what he would like to do. He'd like to be able to play the one and the six. The one six two. I think he's going to play, play the seven. The, he might have to play the two next. He right. might bounce off and go all the way up table for the, right. or come down table on our screen. There he is. That's nice. Now, do you play? I kind of like playing the seven next and then cut the six on the side. But or play it in the corner, same pocket as a two. Which pattern you like here? Because you've got a choice here for sure. Well, I definitely would play the two six. I would play the two, then the six. I see what you're getting at because once well, you, you get position on, on the seven, seven uh, you don't have to move the cue ball very right. far. He's playing for the seven. He's playing for the seven. And he's going to come across. He's going to have to now because he can't get at the six. He's got to play the seven. Now, do you play it above, above the 12 or below the 12? I think I go below. Tell you what, he don't. Ideal's not exactly on that rail. No. I tell you what, he's falling a little funny here. <coughs> he uh, he's got to cut that in, Tom. And the problem, if he goes too far forward, he may end up with an awful thin cut on that eight ball. He may actually play the six and try to bump the eight for this other side pocket. What do you think? Uh, yeah, what I would think you do here, buddy? I think he'd definitely bump the eight. I wouldn't want to trust this trying to roll all the way down to the end and all the way back. I, I'd want to go right into it. Yeah, go right think, into it or uh, even draw it past it between those two balls. That's, uh, i tell you what, he's falling on the, he's got to aim at this. This is not, a, this is not automatic making this shot. No, though. I don't and think. And this is one of those kind that like to skid too. He makes this, he'll go up seven. He did it. He goes up seven five. I tell you, he's tough. All right, Efren Reyes is just one rack away from uh, repeating as a world eight ball champion. And of course, he'll have the cue stick for the break when we come back to the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas. Stay tuned. So it's come down to this, 7-5. Reyes leads Wetch. Reyes with the cue in hand and a chance to defend successfully his World 8 Ball Championship. Going to get a ball in the corner. Yep. Got Small. a solid. Yeah. Got a, a little solid. One. Yeah. Looked like, I don't know, three got ball. Got a three ball combination, so. Tom. Hey. Hey. <laughs> He's got it, hasn't he? I believe that's. Oh, yeah, what, is that a uh, stripe up there or is that? That's a stripe. No. If he can hit one of those balls there, 
It looks like to I me. He's I believe the only one he can hit is the seven. Oh boy, that's the best one, I think. <laughs> I'd rather play the seven combination and then if I could draw back and catch the nine and get rid of these three and go down and take care of the six, the five, and the one. But he's going the other way. He must. Uh, he don't have option here now, does he? Whoops. He's kind of on the 50 yard line a little bit here. He's pretty thin on this one. And he really is, and he has no shot at the five over there either. And uh, he's, uh, he may try to come out of there two rails where he's got position. He can cut in the corner up there. That's what he's going to do. Oh, no, he's staying high. <laughs> I tell you what, this is still tricky, buddy. This is getting yeah, real tricky. He's got a combination at it now, though. But he's still got that seven in there. Right. He's probably going to play the cue ball to just double kiss it so he can stay there for the next ball. Oh, Ooh. he was able to draw over. It just depends on how thin on this seven he is. Uh, if he can get position on the two or the five here, that's evidently it's not too bad. Well, he got up. See, so I think his problem, he's just a little bit too thin on this seven, maybe. He may have to bump that 14. To get the Up two the ball where ball. he can get at it? No, just to get position so it stops the cue ball. Right there. And now he's got to go. He's he got to draw may have table. to go across table, and then he's going to be, he, he's going to have to play a pretty good position shot for that eight. He needs to be about the same distance off the rail as the five ball is with the white ball, I think. He's deep on it. I tell you what, uh, he's going to be coming right toward those That's two gonna stripes. That's going to right in here. And it's going to depend on, uh, or can he draw back here, buddy? He may be able to come straight across and then back out. Get above the 13? Can he get above the I 13? I don't think so. I think he's going to have to play, play below the 13 over and back. I don't know. Below the 13, he's hooked oh, himself. Oh, that thing. He's hooked himself. Oh. He's going to almost have to play a jump shot, it looks like to me, or a curve shot. The curve shot may not work because he might scratch in the side. I think the only thing, unless you kick at it, one rail by that 13, he did that earlier on the one ball. Yes, well, if he shoots the curve shot, he'll be all right because the cue ball will come in about the first diamond. Oh, it'll go below the side? Well, yeah, if he's, if he's curving it, if he's curving it because he's got to send it out and it's going to come in at a different angle than what you're looking at there. You see what I'm saying? I can't believe he's looking at the end rail, I mean. It'll come at an angle even greater than where the 15 is. He's going with either the curve or the jump. He's playing it up in the left-hand corner. He's going with screen. the... He's curving it. This is it for the World 8 Ball Championship. This would put him at 8. Ooh. Not yet. Not no, he's yet, lucky. Tom. He's lucky he didn't scratch on that as well. That must have been a very difficult shot. Must have been a very difficult oh, shot. Oh, it was a difficult oh. shot. He had to curve his ball and then hit a certain spot. That ball came really off. Really hard to do. He was surprised that that cue ball stopped behind that uh, stripe there. He thought he had hit it hard enough to clear because I seen him when it hit the rail. He was a little stunned. Is there a problem for Wetch? Can he run this rack now? And Wetch loves this layout. Yeah. He's so see. happy. It's unbelievable. Number one, the guy just shot at the winning world championship eight ball, and he's back at the table. He's got to be happy as a lark, wouldn't you think, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no question about that. Yeah. Got to feel he's got a new lease on life. Just don't do anything to get it screwed up, huh? Yeah, he just got to just don't get stupid. He just got to make sure he doesn't. He doesn't run into something. Just stay out in the middle there. He'll be all right. Yeah, he can really play about any pattern he wants here. Yeah, it's he just pick these off. Wherever he falls on the next ball, that makes it easier to go to the next ball. He just doesn't want to get the cue ball on the rail. Just keep it out in space. If he runs his rack, he'll move it to 7-6. Ray is still up by a game in the race to 8. I know what I'd be thinking about. Just bear wow. down and run out here to score seven six. And if I could ever run two racks, I'd become the world eight ball championship. Yeah. <laughs> Win okay. that tournament right here if he can run two racks after this one. Yeah. And what a what a move that'd be for this young 
pro player out of Bloomington, Minnesota. Thought you were going to say whippersnapper. No. <laughs> Although he's certainly, I'm old enough and he's young enough to qualify in both regards. <laughs> huh? That's it. Oh, well, you're well, home you know, from. I thought for a moment he'd missed it. <laughs> he used the whole pocket. Oh, boy, then. didn't he? It looked a little sneaky to me. <laughs> yeah, he uh, he's from a suburb of. Look, look at him. out. Stop. Look Stop. out. Stop. Look out. That's the most unbelievable shot I've ever seen. Can you believe he done that? You know, the eight ball championship of the whole world. Is that cruel to have it end like that for him? Yeah. Ball in hand, and here's Reyes. How cruel can it be? He's smiling on the outside, oh. but he's crying on the inside. Oh. An unbelievable set of circumstances. Oh, Jimmy Wetch has got to be just. Wow. Shouldn't go near anything sharp for the next couple of days. Don't shave, don't go near any sharp <laughs> edges. That. that was like an Alfred Hitchcock movie there. What a twist at the end, huh? Oh, unbelievable. So the winner and still champion, the world eight ball master is Efren Reyes, and we'll be back in just a bit. From the Riviera Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, the Pro Billiards Tour presents the Camel Pro Billiards Series, brought to you by AMF Playmaster, bringing quality to the table, American Professional Billiards, and by Mayuchi, used by more pros than any other custom cue. Well, the Camel Pro Billiard Series got off to a great start for television. A very dramatic finish to the World 8-Ball Championship. We're going to talk to all the participants, the happy winner and the, uh, I can't believe it happened to me, loser Jimmy. But first, the commissioner here. Don, you couldn't get this tour off to a better start than this. Well, I'll tell you what. I think Jimmy could have got it off to a better start if he hadn't lost that shot at the end. But two-time world champion Efren Reyes keeps doing it every time out. He's the reason why the Pro Billiards Tour is the greatest pool on earth. Serious pull, Tom. And I tell you, he's called the magician. Make no mistake about it. Maybe he had a little magical twist on that shot that Jimmy suckered right back into the pocket for a scratch. This, of course, is the trophy. And Don Mackey, who's the commissioner for the Pro Billiard Tour, will be making that presentation. Jimmy Wetch, you proved, among other things, that you certainly belong playing for the World 8-Ball Championship. I was very impressed with your play today. Well, thank you. I don't, I don't know what to say after that. I was glad to be there and glad to be part of the Camel Pro Billiards Tour Series, and congratulations to Efren. I can't believe the ball did what it did. In fact, uh, Nick Varner and Buddy Hall said it's almost like an Alfred Hitchcock movie. What a twist at the end of it. Looked like you were going to make it a 7-6 game and have the cue and uh, a chance to break, and boy, it would have been something. I had a chance if I didn't scratch. Uh, yeah. Any of the top players can run two racks from there. I'm just trying to draw it like two inches, and get to the middle of the table and I somehow drew it all the way back to the side. I know pocket. it's a very <laughs> tough loss for you, but uh, you played brilliantly, really, and we wish you continued success. Thank Efren, you. give me five, my man. Congratulations, the defending champ, the magician. You're a great pool player. Uh, thank you very much. You're a little bit lucky, though, huh? Oh, that's lucky this time, you know, if you don't scratch. <laughs> I'm my son in the whole set. Let me tell you, great champions make their own luck. Larry Kiger, of course, with... Uh, marketing and uh, the man who's involved with uh, the Camel Pro Billiard Series getting it off to a great start and you've got a little presentation for the champion Larry. Definitely off to a great start. We've got a quarter million dollars in Camel Pro Billiard Series point fund money at the end of the year and I know Efren was number 10 coming in to this event and now I know he's in the top five so I know he's going to be on the march to get into the uh, uh, to the top money in the program we've got something for him right back here it's a check for twenty thousand dollars that's not bad Efren you keep picking these up huh congratulations and I tell you it doesn't look like much but you can cash that baby believe me twenty thousand dollars worth congratulations on a magnificent tournament we thank you for being with us I want to thank Nick Varner and Buddy Hall for their expert and tease and comments on the program today. We hope you've enjoyed being with us here at the Riviera Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas. Coming up, the series continues. It'll be San Juan, Puerto Rico, El Conquistador. It'll be a great stop, and we look forward to having all of you with us. We'll see you there in a couple of weeks. Don Mackey, the commissioner. I'm Tom Kelly. For all of us here on the Pro Billiard Tour, thanks, and keep that stick chalked up. You never know, and you may get a chance to play for the big money. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.